Hello, today we are going to talk about how to install Microsoft Word on Linux and how to use Microsoft Word on Linux. So this is my hardware computer. It has Kubuntu 22.10 Linux OS installed on it. And um, I needed to edit some documents for which uh, Microsoft Word was the only alternative. So I tried uh, different possibilities of installing Microsoft Word on uh, Linux and I finally settled for a uh, Windows 32-bit virtual machine and Microsoft Office 32-bit. In my case it's Windows 10 32-bit and Microsoft Office 2019 32-bit. Okay, let's see how this thing works. So I have a directory with uh, document files that I want to edit. Some sample uh, document files for uh, university thesis. This is available on my in my home drive. So it's in my tilde directory, my home directory. And I expose this directory to the virtual machine using an RDP client, remote desktop uh, protocol client. The incantation is this one, so X3 RDP, the user on the Windows machine, a uh, initial resolution, does not really matter what you put in here, then the IPv4 address of the virtual machine, that we want video acceleration, the best codecs, the best speed, and then that we want to resize the Windows um, OS as we want by just resizing the pre-RDP RDP client. Then the best uh, bits per pixel, so depth of color, and that we want to redirect my tilde, my home directory, inside of the virtual machine. Okay. So, I'm connecting to the virtual machine using FreeRDP, which allows me to do things like I can maximize the window and now the Windows OS resolution has changed to something a bit below 1080p. Or I can make the FreeRDP window use the left half of the screen. I'm on uh, Ubuntu, so I use uh, KD Plasma in order to make a window use half of the screen, I move the window to the left, I drag the window by the title bar until it uh, uses half of the screen, like this. Okay. Um, then I have uh, copy-paste of text available between the pre-RTP client and my hardware machine. What do I want to do? Special paste. Okay. So copy-paste of text, I can resize the size of the Word file as I want, as a, uh, of the Word application as I want, because the Word application is maximized in the Windows virtual machine. And then just by resizing the FreeRDP window, I get the virtual machine resized, and that will also resize the uh, Word window. Okay. How do I get access to my uh, work directory? It's uh, available as a um, SMB share, so network, DS client, home, and then I navigate to the directory. Q2, today, and the work directory. Okay. 
I can open any of the files I want. Okay, so I want uh, full support for doc files with um, additional features that work well in Word, such as special footers and um, you know, styles, font rendering, etc. Things that um, do not work for me in other solutions such as Google Docs or Libre Office Writer. Okay. I can open as many Word documents as I want, but I want to open just one. It works exactly as expected with zero bugs. I did not encounter any bugs while um doing this and i actually keep my um, doc files under version control so for instance i do something like uh, let me select uh, the template that i want to use How do I make this use half of the screen? And Windows left and uh, Windows right work correctly, which means I will snap so it I can snap the word window to make it use half of the sc um, screen of the virtual machine. Like this. So not this, maybe this one, not this, not this. Not this. Not this. Okay, so I'll go with this one. So it's the AWS one. I need just one file. And uh, let me create a directory. I'll put a file in there. Close all the world windows. I uh, rename this thing with uh, my preferred name. I put it under version control. Okay. The history looks like this, just one git commit, just one branch called master. The git commit message is the correct one, so initial commit. The entire file was added. Okay. Let's open the file in Word. Let's start uh, working. 
what's the today's date? this Okay, I like what's happening here. Let's see if it has a table of contents. Yes, it has. Let me refresh it. Okay. Let's save the work and do the first commit. So it says that the binary files uh, are uh, different, which is not okay, which uh, because the file has the extension doc, you can tell uh, Git to compare the different versions of the doc file using a um, Tool that converts doc files to plain text files, which I need to configure in here. Otherwise, I cannot see the changes between uh, document versions. But that's outside of the scope of this um, um, today's screen recording. Okay, so add. Okay, commit, let's look at the history. I made git uh, be able to diff, show differences between uh, doc files in a human readable way using the executable nt word. And the end result looks like this. So in the uh, git work directory. I start git GUI and now the changes that I have to the document are shown in a human readable format. It actually, I actually just replaced the department with computer science, nothing else. And also when I look at the history the initial commit where the file was um, added to the git repository shows the entirety of the body of the doc file. For the first um, git commit, I only changed it. I only changed date and two names, and uh, I refreshed the table of contents. And the local uncommitted changes, I replace department with computer science. So let's commit this to click on the file, on the icon of the file to move it from unstaged changes to staged changes. Right. 
Nice. Commit. Um, yeah, commit. And now let's look at the changes that I did. So in the git config file, so a git configuration that applies just to this uh, git repository. I have uh, the diff application for anti-word uses the text conversion so for uh, from anything to the human readable plain text format using the executable anti-word and this is the category that uh, defines the file extensions that are going to use anti-word in order to convert to plain text human readable format for display purposes. Okay, so that was step one. Step two is to add a file named .git attributes that makes you that defines that files with the extension doc, only lowercase doc, so you need to make sure you lowercase your uh, file extensions. We'll use the diff method anti-word, which uh, uses anti-word to convert to plain text human readable format. Okay, you install anti-word from, um, from, from your package manager so do not install anti word okay is at the newest version already okay let's clean everything up rescan once I close Word, the backup file disappears. You might want to git uh, ignore the doc, the Word, Microsoft Word doc backup files. Okay. Use anti Word. Okay, so initial commit with the entire upload, advisor and committee member, department, and divert. Okay. So again, Microsoft Word works correctly, the fonts work correctly, rendering is correct. Uh, bit depth is correct. Everything is the way you would expect it from oh, as using uh, Microsoft Word on Microsoft Windows. And the speed of rendering via R RDP protocol is impressive. Copy paste of text works. What else could I ask for uh, from Microsoft uh, Word. Okay, so how did I set everything up? Is I installed a um, Windows 10 32-bit virtual machine using the default software for virtualization, so the default virtualization solution in Kubuntu 22.10, which is Virtual Machine Manager, QMU KVM. I'm on AMD Ryzen hardware, so I have AMD minus V, which needs to be enabled in the hardware computer's BIOS in the UFI firmware. Then I'm using the best hardware possible. So both the hardware is capable. I have AMD M4 motherboard, and uh, DDR4 RAM and uh, NVMe PCIe3 SSD, but also the hardware 
that's configured inside the virtual machine is also the best performing possible, which is it which uses a vert so vert for ssd for network interface card balloon etc in windows i've made uh, windows the windows virtual machine use as little uh, cpu percent and ram percent as possible so i've disabled microsoft defender automatic updates the firewall again resize window works correctly i can make it use a quarter of the screen half of the screen the entirety of the screen not a problem the linux home directory is available as a network share in the virtual machine i can mount that virtual uh, that uh, share in the virtual machine i can mount just the directory if i want so this thing just the start directory the git working folder as a partition in here if i want i'm not sure yet how that thing is done but i've done it before yeah with uh, net use Net use like this. So net use device name. Let's make this thing. I don't know S. And then the full path to the directory. This thing. And now my Git working directory is available as the local drive s okay i don't use windows explorer but if i would use windows explorer i would configure it correctly which is um this pc don't show frequently clear, frequently apply, view, display full path, show hidden, hide empty, okay, hide. hide extensions, hide protected. like this so I open Windows Explorer I go to the it all automatically went to this PC and now s colon is the git work directory again I'm not using git both in the virtual machine and in the, on the hardware machine just on the hardware machine I'm using the virtual machine exclusively for windows word nothing else so not even uh, i'm not even sure i should do um, the mapping of the network share to a uh, drive okay so everything continues to work correctly and um, I'm using the RDP server from Windows 10, so built into most versions of Windows, there's an RDP server that can be enabled. And on the Linux side, I'm using the RDP, which is... Okay. Free RDP to... minus x11 okay this is the command line that i use and now let me tell you what other 
technologies I tried to use and did not work as well for me and uh, how I set up the uh, current setup. So I tried the wine, I searched on the internet, uh, there's the wine um, HQ database, not all versions of uh, Microsoft Office can be installed and work the same way so as well on Wine. So you need to maybe use a older version like Office um, 2007. That's not a problem. I just use files with extension doc and those work perfectly on in Office 2007. No need to for Office 2019 or M365. But um, then I need to know exactly how to install it because I need to configure Wine in a certain way. I need to do certain Wine tricks. Then after I install it, I need to also run the new executable winword.exe in a certain way. So somebody suggested that they have used Play on Linux, which is a package, a dip package that's available in Ubuntu. I've installed that. It's uh, two years old. I've installed Microsoft Office 2007 and then that thing, um, so when I installed Play on Linux, it installed the 32-bit dev files that are needed for um, Wine to work, so you know, more than 100 dev files. I had uh, zero 32-bit dev files previously and now I have 132-bit dev files because my machine is x64. Um, and uh, then Word didn't work correctly, it started crashing after a while. I could not resize the window. The Microsoft Word window uses client-side uh, decorations in the sense that it doesn't use the default Windows decoration. Maybe that's what um, did not allow me to freely resize the window. So after a while, after, uh, you know, I had all sorts of uh, issues and bugs, I wanted a solution that's as bug free as possible and as stable as possible. I tried to configure a Windows 10 64 bit, which is my go to for Windows operating systems. And for some reason, that thing would not work with 4 gigabytes of RAM. If I made the virtual machine just 4 gigabytes of RAM, it would swap very um, intensely. So it uh, thinks that it does not have enough RAM and it uses the page file c colon backslash uh, page file dot sys a lot and that spins off my uh, CPU usage, my fans and I can see that the virtual machine is really, really struggling and that's also thrashing my SSD. So the only way to make that work was to allocate six gigabytes of RAM uh, random access memory to the virtual machine. And then I said, okay, but I remember that Microsoft Word used to work perfectly on Windows XP 128 megabytes of RAM on real hardware, one CPU core. And I said, why can't I have a similar experience in uh, um, with the today's hardware so I can assign it six CPU cores if needed. The CPU cores are way, way, way faster than what was available in the year 2000. I can give it more than 128 megabytes of RAM. I can give it, I don't know, four gigabytes of RAM, not a problem. I have enough. So then I tried to use Windows XP 32-bit, but that's um, end of uh, life by Microsoft. So I did the next logical step, which is to use Windows 10 32-bit. 
because that kind of limits the amount of RAM that I can assign to the virtual machine to 4 gigabytes of RAM and that probably works really good and maybe I can even um, decrease the amount of RAM that I give to the virtual machine maybe I know to 3 megabytes uh, to 3 gigabytes of RAM so let's look at the performance of the virtual machine so first of all my uh, CPU fans are not spinning at all. Then uh, memory usage, the biggest uh, offender is WinWorld itself, just a process. 52 megabytes of RAM. Okay, the others are under 10 megabytes of RAM. and uh, memory usage so it's capped to four gigabytes hardware reserve two gigabytes i'm not sure what that thing means it says it's using 1.2 megabytes out of two so why not uh, dot two gigabytes out of two i'm not sure what this thing means but i can see if uh, the memory consumption is high enough such that the page file is used constantly by going to resource monitor disk and uh, doing the following things so on the disk tab storage so descending by active time being an ssd the active time should almost never be more than 10 percent and it should certainly not stay constant at 10 percent and then uh, sort this activity uh, by total descending and process with this activity total descending okay so let's look so the page file is the most used file, but it's used by the memory compression. When uh, the system uses the swap intensely, there's the first, uh, I don't know, at least 20 processes all read and write to the uh, page file. So see column backslash page file dot uh, What's that? So this file, page file dot sys, this is the swap file in Windows. Okay, so I can see that the swap file is not used. So definitely there's three hardware RAM available to the processes in this operating system. Okay. And then CPU usage is really low. So Word is running and using zero CPU. Perform on this application for monitoring is actually using the um, biggest amount of um, CPU. Okay, so let's shut down everything and um, see how I configure the virtual machine. So I went to Word Manager. This thing. And I'm creating a new virtual machine. Local install media or Word. Browse refresh. It's this uh, ISO. Choose volume. It did not find the correct uh, operating system. So let's. 
tell it what it is. Windows 10. Yes, that's what it is. Forward. So it's 32 gigabytes of RAM. No need to go for um, more than 4 gigabytes of RAM. It's a 32-bit um, operating system. So let's, I don't know, try 3 gigabytes. CPUs, I have 16. They are never used. So let's go, I don't know, with 6 and see if this works. Okay. Forward. 100 gigabytes of uh, SSD for the virtual machine. Forward. Win 10. And today's date. Customize before install. Finish. And let's look at the settings because I'm not using so Windows 11 forces you to use uh, UFI, but I prefer BIOS. So Windows 10 still supports BIOS. Okay, the newest um, motherboard. CPU 6, topology is wrong, let's correct it, 1, and then this 6, apply, memory, let's try with 3 gigabytes of RAM, boot options, SATA disk, let's make this uh, vert IO, yes, SATA CD-ROM, the ISO for installing Windows, I'll need a second um, CD-ROM for the Word I.O. drivers. Okay, finish. So the Word I.O. drivers are I.O. Win. Okay, this and the newest version. So the newest version is from this year, 2023.01. And the file has the extension ISO. And this is the one that I want. So vertio win 01229.iso. So I have downloaded this thing and made available to Vert Manager. Okay, so both CD-ROMs need to be SATA because otherwise the virtual machine will not see them. Okay, network interface card also. Let's make this word IO. The rest I have never needed to change. So apply and begin installation. You could go with uh, the default hardware for the virtual machine, which is SATA SATA hard disk. That works perfectly fine for Microsoft Word. And then network interface card, Intel E1000. Works perfectly, not a problem. But for the extra speed, I went for Word IO hardware in the virtual machine. Okay. I accept install only. So because the hard disk, the SSD is Word IO, Windows does not see it by default. So we need to install inside the Windows that's running as live CD from the CD-ROM to install a Windows kernel module. So we go that with um, load driver, browse, E colon, which is Vertio Win. Um, I'm using 32-bit, so I386 and Windows 10. 
then OK. It found it automatically. Now next. OK, drive zero unallocated space was selected automatically. I can press next. And an advantage of using Vert IO for the network interface card is that the installer will not be able to find Windows kernel drivers for the network interface card. Um, the installer will not have access to the network, so it will not try to uh, force me to use a Microsoft account for uh, logging into my Windows operating system. So it will allow me to use regular Windows user accounts, local Windows user accounts. And the installer will be a bit simplified because I do not have access to the internet. Okay, so that's about it. Let me pause a second. Okay, so the Windows installer has restarted the virtual machine once. Now it's asking for another set of questions in as part of the Windows 10 installer wizard. Just press next, next, skip. And now it uh, would prefer that I have a working network interface connection, but I do not have. So I do not have internet. I'll continue with limited setup. So I'm not using any of the online features and Microsoft features. Who's going to use this PC admin? So administrator is a user that's already created. So it's a Windows local user. So I need to name this user something else than administrator. So I went with admin. Super short password. It's a virtual machine just for Microsoft Word. Does not matter what you set in here. Nobody is going to steal your virtual machine from you. No, any interesting Microsoft extra feature. No Cortana. Okay, so this is part of um, setting up my local user account. So this uh, new local Windows user, which is named admin. Let me pause for a second. OK, so I've installed um, Microsoft Office. And now I'm doing the rest of the settings. So I do my usual terraforming, which means I'll want um, to enable the RDP server on this machine. For that, I need a network interface card. For that, I need to uh, set the rest of um, device drivers. So it says that there's three devices that do not have a Windows kernel module. Let's fix this problem. Update driver. So I went right click on the Ethernet controller, which is the network interface card, update driver. 
and then browse my computer for drivers. I select E in here, so the Vertio Win CD-ROM. I keep the defaults and then press next. Automatically finds it. I go close. Do you want to allow? I know. Yes. And then I do the same thing for the two remaining other devices. So browse my computer for drivers. E is pre-selected. I go next. Finds the correct one. I go close. Then back to other devices, click on PCI Simple Communications Controller, right click, update driver, browse my computer, next, close. So now all of the hardware is correctly configured and has correct um, Windows kernel drivers. The next step is to move the taskbar to the left to hide the not needed things in the Windows taskbar, such as Windows Mail. Okay. And the next thing is to set up uh, the name of the machine. So rename this PC, I'm going to name it exactly the way it's named in the virtualization software. So win 10 0 4 19. It requires that I restart. So let's do that. Okay. So now the machine has a network interface card, has an IPv4 address, which is this one ending with 168. It um, has uh, the correct uh, name for the Windows OS, but uh, we still cannot connect uh, using the RDP client because we did not enable yet the RDP server. So we'll enable the RDP server, then as much as possible, we'll try not to use virtual machine manager in order to connect to the virtual machine anymore. So just RDP client from there on. Okay. So system, rename advanced, remote, allow, uncheck, okay. That's about it. I'll, uh, I can even disconnect if I want. Admin, uh, sign out. And now let's try this uh, command line for uh, connecting via RDP. This is the IPv4 address. So control C, control L, control shift V, go. So it says that it does not know this uh, um, RDP server. Am I sure that I want to continue connecting? I go yes to trust this um, digital certificate. Password for the user admin. And I'm in. Okay. So let's do the rest of the things. I do not want this icon. I want what? To not see these productivity things. To not see the 3D viewer. Okay. Then I want the system to be uh, more lightweight. So for that I go to the firewall, Windows Defender firewall with advanced security. I disable all of the possible firewalls. OK. 
Okay. Um, local group policy. In here, I disable Microsoft Defender, the antivirus. Turn off Microsoft Defender antivirus. Enabled. Okay. Okay, so that's local computer policy, computer configuration, administrative templates, Windows components, Microsoft Defender antivirus, turn off Microsoft Defender antivirus, and this is set to true. So turn off enabled. Okay, then the same thing for Windows update. So local computer policy, computer configuration, administrative templates, Windows components, and then Windows update. And I want it to not do automatic updates. I can do manually. I can manually install all of the updates I want, when I want, but nothing should be automatic. And I say configure automatic updates disabled. Okay. Okay, so now the TI Worker and the other heavy processes that run when I start the computer will not run as part of Windows update. Then Windows Defender will leave my files alone, not scan them a million of times, not needed, because I'm not using a web browser in this virtual machine. I cannot install viruses here. I just have one doc file that's coming from the exterior. Okay, what else? You know. I can, for instance, disable IPv6. Not really needed to disable it, but I often do it. And then what else? So I install the virtual machine drivers. I disabled features. Resize Windows works. Copy paste works. Linux Home Directory works. So this is about it. Let's go to where we were. So Word. Yeah, I could install all of the Windows updates. So that's check for updates, this thing. But I will not do it now. I can uninstall some extra applications that I do not need, such as, you know, Feedback Hub or Groove Music, or um, Microsoft Solitaire, Paint 3D, Snip and Sketch, etc. Then open Word. Let's see that it works. Okay, good morning. Accept. And then the access to the directory from the hardware machine where I have the mthesis.doc file that I actually edit. So network. So network TS client, TS client home work. Today's directory and the start directory. And that's it. Microsoft Word works correctly on a stable Windows 10 virtual machine, and I connect using FreeRDP to Microsoft Word.
let's make sure that uh, the virtual machine has enough uh, resources. So this is the antivirus. Uh, probably requires a computer restart or something to disappear from here. I've already disabled it. Okay, says that um, there's enough room, ample room inside of the RAM. So I've uh, allocated three gigabytes of RAM to the virtual machine and I could have went with just two. And I should probably do that. So shrink the size of the virtual machines random access memory to two gigabytes and see if everything keeps continuing, keeps working correctly. Okay, let's see if the swap is used excessively. Nope. I can see by the fact that um, SSD active time in percent is way below 10%. Okay, the page file is used by the system and by Perfmon, but not by many processes. So I do not see excessive usage of the swap file. Everything seems to be correct. I could go with um, two gigabytes of RAM and maybe it uh, works. Let me actually make sure that is okay. Okay, so I've um, allocated to the virtual machine just two gigabytes of RAM, 20, 48 megabytes. Let's see if it continues working correctly and not swapping a ton. So back to where I was, or I could, uh, just start word. Go back to the where I was. Okay. Skype application. Well, the antivirus just will not disappear. Okay. performance, memory composition, hardware reserved 0 0.5 megabytes. Okay, let's actually look, I cannot read uh, if there's um, free RAM available or not, so free hardware RAM. Otherwise then by going to the resource monitor disk tab and seeing there. So active time is way less than 10%, that's a good sign. And then I do not see the swap file being used like at all in the first top 20 processes. I can see the page file now. Okay, big um, SSD percent times. These native images, PowerShell. Let's wait a bit to see if it stabilizes or. So right now it's, it might be too small the amount of RAM that I gave to the virtual machine because I can see the page file is the top 
uh, written to file. So zero reads from the page file, but a ton of writes. But the fact that no other application uses the swap file and there's no reads from the swap file. This does look okay-ish. So way too much um, SSD percent usage. The antivirus does something. Let's see why, why isn't the antivirus stopped? Administrative templates, Windows components, Microsoft, Defender, Antivirus, turn off, enabled. Does not run, will not scan computers. Okay, so swap file continues being written to, but not read from. Okay, um, totally, totally okay. This is my verdict. Two gigabytes of RAM for a um, Windows 10 32-bit virtual machine plus um, Microsoft Office seems to be okay. The key here again is 32-bit. Okay. So no need to use the virtual machine manager to connect to the virtual machine. It's enough to just start the virtual machine from uh, this virtual machine manager UI. So we go right click and then you start it. And then that's it. From there on, you connect using this uh, command line and using the executable x3rdp to the virtual machine and you're here where you have access to both your directory on the hardware machine and in here you do git operations and uh, inside freerdp you actually edit a file using microsoft word so this is the way i use microsoft word in linux thank you